Coming up on iOS Today, Rosemary Orchard and I talk about apps that play sounds and music and make sound and music listening even better. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by Casper. When it comes to a better night's sleep, Casper's new cooling collection has you covered. Focus on tomorrow. Let Casper handle the rest. Explore Casper products, mattresses, sheets, pillows, and more at casper.com slash iOS Today and use code iOS Today for $100 off select mattresses. And by Sennheiser. Why settle for anything less than great sound? Come hear the difference with Sennheiser. Right now, for our first 100 listeners who go to Sennheiser.com slash podcast and use promo code iOS, you'll receive 15% off the Momentum True Wireless 2 earbuds or any of their amazing headphones. Well, hello there. This this here is iOS Today, the show where we talk about all things iOS, watchOS, iPadOS, tvOS, HomePodOS. It's all the OSs Apple has on offer. Uh, And I am one of your hosts, Micah Sargent. I'm saying my name correctly this week. Yo, Micah, I'm Rosemary Orchard. Still, I still remember my name. That hasn't changed yet. A total professional. Uh, We have uh, quite a show ahead for you. Um, This week we're talking about, uh, you know, it's not just music that's available uh, in the App Store and and to, you know, to use on your different devices, Uh, but there are ways to improve upon your music listening experience. And there are other ways to listen to things on the App Store. Uh, So we thought we would talk about some of the different options available to you. Um, And it's interesting in doing this, uh, episode, I came across some discoveries of of apps I used to use that are no longer available, and you know, searching for some replacements for it. And uh, in some ways, it's bleak, but I'll get there in a moment. Um, first, we're going to talk about some apps that are less about music and more about sound. Rosemary, tell us about some of your first picks here. Well, my first pick is actually the one that was in the UK App Store in the editorial section this week. I was scrolling through looking for story ideas as Micra and I frequently do. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they, there was this one called Soundscapes. Um, and I thought, oh, that's really interesting because I have a white noise application, which we're going to get to in a moment. Um, but I sometimes, you know, are, I'm more interested in nature sounds. And so Soundscapes is a free app. Um, it, it's got an in-app subscription as well. Um, but, um, the idea is, you know, it's nature sounds. So there's things like a growling, uh, growling grass frog chorus. Um, and they, they also pick artists of the monks and so on. Um, and there's frog songs, dawn choruses, calm rain, um, night that's as bright as day. So that's, you know, somewhere like Sweden or somewhere quite far North in the Northern hemisphere, uh, Cuban nature, for example. And when you tap on one of them, you get a little bit of information about this. So, okay. So you get a picture of where it's from, who, which artist is behind this. Um, and you can see some tags and where exactly this is from. Um, and if you like something, then you can, you can, you can like it and then it'll start suggesting more things like that. Um, which I quite like. And then at the bottom, just like in the music app, when you're listening to music, there's a little bar across that says something. And then, you know, you can jump into whatever's currently playing. Um, and then it'll, you know, play whatever sound it is. I'm going to pause that as well because it's hooping back into my my headphones and <laughs> you can't hear it. So uh, I don't need to do that. Um, but, it, you know, if you tap on the three dots and you go back to the same page and if you like it, then, you know, of course you can like it. If you tap on the artist, you can find out more about them. And you scroll down, you can see other things. Um, And you'll find that a lot of these people are sort of photographers or something like that. So they frequently go to, you know, a circle around where they live. And so they'll find lots of similar sorts of things which aren't the same. Um, But I really love this app. It's beautiful. It's really well designed. Um, You can also build playlists. So this really is just like the music app because you've got playlists. You also have moods um, and it suggests some things. So I'm in the mood to relax on a Friday night. It's built a little playlist of nature sounds for me. So I can, you know, there's gentle rain and bird songs, Dakota Tempest, um, summer storms, things like that. And then if I play it, it'll go through. And if I skip on to the next one, then it goes to the next one. 
um, in, in, in my playlist, um, or the suggested playlist. These are like stations in Apple music. There's also a sleep timer built in, which is really good if you want to use that sleep option. Um, and you know, there's, there's moods for all kinds of days. There's also, you know, tags. So you can say, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I want to listen to some wind and it'll find a whole bunch of things with wind in for you. And I just really like the app. It's pretty. Um, and it seems great to me. Um, you know, i Obviously, you know, the in-app subscription uh, for people who aren't a fan of those, then, you know, that that's, um, you know, not such uh, a great option, but it it is pretty great. I'm just double checking. Um, all access monthly is $3.50 or for a year, it's $29. Um, so it's not the most expensive of subscriptions, but it's also not the cheapest, but they, these sounds really are very high quality. Um, and yeah, that, uh, that's something I appreciate. I was going to say that... Um alone is what kind of uh, makes me really like this app is the fact that these are real people creating real, uh, you know, music soundscapes that, that are recording these real soundscapes, uh, as opposed to it being some kind of, um, you know, generated content or contents taken from a sound library that exists somewhere. You, I feel there's, there's a, a connection that takes place whenever you can see the artist that is making these and that they're coming from, you know, locations that you can learn about. All that coming together would really make me feel more connected to these than just hopping into a random app and, and hitting play on a soundscape that may be uh, computer generated. Yes. Um, and, you know, I think both of those options have their merits, as we're going to see with the the next app mm -hmm. um, in the list, because, you know, they're, they're, there's two different approaches to this. And if you want to listen to sounds, you know, as a way to help you relax, maybe meditate, things like that, um, then, you know, I think Soundscapes is going to be the app for that. Whereas if you're looking for something that's purely for background music or background noise, then maybe maybe you don't care about that quite as much. Yeah. A uh, really cool app. And yeah, I, I think that, you know, that's less than an Apple Music subscription. And yeah. as as we noted, you know, these are sound artists and others who are going out in these real world locations, recording these sounds and providing them to you. So uh, that price feels really good, actually, um, for, for what you're getting out of it. Uh, do we know how often they update with new uh, sounds to the library? Uh, there was a notification when I started it up and I've now forgotten um, exactly what it said. Um, but there is an option to turn on notifications um, so that you can get notifications when new sounds are added. Um, cool. And uh, I've forgotten. Um, so somewhat yeah. regularly, if they have that feature, then it's clear yeah. that they make that part of the, you know, the play. And I, I like that because sometimes you get an app and you're going subscription what is it that i'm getting out of this you know not, i think not not so much for us as uh either developers or developer adjacent or you know friends with lots of developers and awareness of how the app store uh or how app development works um it's easier for me to to say yes to subscriptions but i think for uh the average person who's a little bit detached from that to go okay what's the value that i'm getting here for continuing to pay uh having that notification that says hey remember how you're paying for this you're getting new sounds all the time um and then it also keeps it fresh so your brain doesn't necessarily if if you're using it as uh, as you said meditation um it can be helpful to have that kind of always changing versus uh, if you get used to it, then it suddenly doesn't help you uh, maintain focus. Um, it, and that, of course, depends on uh, the type of, of listening that you're doing, whether yeah. new or familiar is helpful. So uh, really cool. Uh, soundscapes. Yeah. Listen yeah, there's one other nature. feature I forgot to mention, which I do just want to uh, highlight a moment. Um, and that is if you pop into the settings of the application, there's the option to mix audio with other apps. Um, and so this means means that if you're if you want to listen to say a podcast or an audiobook um, but it's just, you know, voices and say, for example, it's a Dungeons and Dragons podcast. Okay. And they're in a dungeon um, and there's a little stream running along somewhere. Then you might want some music to augment your experience or, you know, you're, you're listening to an audiobook, you know, things like that. Well, you can mix the audio with other apps, which means that you can be listening to uh, soundscapes while listening to audio in whatever other app that is. You don't need to try and mix and match two devices to get that experience. You can do it all in one, um, which is a great feature for anything like this. Very cool. Uh, yeah, I like that uh, especially. All right, tell us about this next one. It's it's a, a fan favorite and a show favorite and a favorite favorite. 
And people, yeah. if you haven't gotten it yet, you just need to get it. Tell us about Dark Noise. So Dark Noise is a one-time $5.99 purchase. Um, and it is a white noise application. And it's got a whole bunch of sounds built into it. And unlike soundscapes where you've got, say, a seven or a 12-minute you know, sound and that's it, then it, and then it moves on to the next one. These are looping sounds. Um, and so... For example, there's rain. And if I go to select noise, then you can see there's all sorts of things. There's white noise, pink noise, brown noise, different kinds of rain, rain on a tent, lakes. Um, and you can favorite different ones of these if you like. So if you like desk fans and air conditioners, then you can have that. And this is how I go to sleep at night. But what I like about this is the custom options. So I've got a, a one here called custom rain, and that's just a rain sound that I've made. Um, so I'm going to pop into the settings and now I have to remember off the top of my head how I did this because um, I've now, of course, managed to forget. There we go. Plus in the top right. That was it. Simple. Um, and so you add noises. So you can add multiple different rain sounds, for example, if you want lots of rain. Um, so you, you know, you find that this helps you sleep. Um, but maybe just one of those in particular doesn't work for you. Um, so what you can do, and you might have noticed I just tapped on rain and had rain add twice. Um, mm -hmm. And I've spoken to the developer here, um, Charlie Chapman. And so what he does, if you think of every, um, you know, soundtrack as like a length, okay, like a piece of string. Now, all of these loops have a couple of different, you know, they've got different lengths. Okay. So, well, there might be seven, well, there might be seven and a half seconds. So, mm -hmm. just by its very nature, when one of them goes from the start to the end and then starts again, you're going to have a mixture um, and it's, it's all going to change. Mm -hmm. But what I really like about this is he doesn't start all of these different sounds at zero. Okay. I'm going to oh. switch hands so that people can see. So, he actually, starts them randomly at the length in the track and it's random every single time. So you're never listening to the same combination of sounds in these custom sounds, you know, ever again, because it's always random and then everything loops. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think that that's just a really nice touch that he's done there, um, which, you know, it's, is important. So um, back to creating a custom sound. So I can adjust the volume here. So if, if heavy rain is good, but I don't want it to be too loud because it's quite bassy, then I can turn that down a little bit on the volume. Um, if drippy rain and dra rain on the tent are great, then I can pull those up. And I'm just going to turn rain down a little bit. And I'm going to add a name, uh, iOS today with an exclamation mark and save. And then if, if you look here, then iOS today has got, um, it, it is right there in my mixes. And actually if I swipe, um, then I can delete it. And of course I can go back in and edit it. And I will, because I forgot that you can change the icon. There's an icon builder. Nice. Um, and all of these icons are animated. And I really love that little touch. Oh, that's really cool. Um, I didn't know about so, that So, you know, you can see the rain hitting the tent um, and, you know, the, the, the sound, the bars in the sounds pulse, um, and you know the fan rotates, and you can you can change you know the the foreground and the background to wow, be whatever is so appropriate much. for you. So there's even uh, the option to you know pop into the rainbow and select something in particular if you need to. Uh, so attention to foreground. detail. Yeah, it, it's really great. Um, and this is a five ninety nine one time purchase. So for people who aren't um, able to pay for a subscription, for example, then this is this is really op uh, great. Um, I will just say uh, there's, of course, multiple app icons. Anybody who didn't guess that I'm using default purple, um, unfortunately, you're down a bonus point today. But there's also six <laughs> colors uh, and some drawn by some, some lovely children. But I also like the syncs. So there's iCloud syncing here, which means that whenever you get a new device, then everything will sync over. And if you open up Dark Noise on an iPad, then that's all there. I know sometimes I've tried to install iOS updates in the evening and I've been ready to go to bed, but my phone's still installing updates. And so instead I use my iPad to uh, play the noise. But uh, one little area that people should be aware of are the dark claps. Dramatic music here, please. Um, and here, if you pop into there, you've got mix audio as well. And just like soundscapes, that means that you can have this mix, um, the audio together um, with whatever um, is, um, you know, playing. So podcasts, audio books, even music. There's also unnamed goose mode. For people who've played the untitled goose game and liked hitting the honk button, if you turn this on, it immediately honks at you. And then whenever you move around, there's there's certain things that will then trigger honking sounds. So there's some fun bits in here as well. Um, 
And uh, there's also boosting volume and lowering volume, which may or may not work on your speakers as noted um, there, but that's pretty uh, pretty great. Uh, there's also um, the option to add widgets to your home screen and the way I use it most is with the shortcut support, but we've covered that before. So I'm not going to dive into that right now because we uh, covered that in a previous uh, shortcuts corner. Um, but dark noise is a great application. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend it if you would like some background sounds. I have been playing with a couple of different ones for while I'm working. Um, um, because mm-hmm. even though I love working from home, I do. I also like having the sound of other people around sometimes, not all the time. And I love the ability to pause it when I need to um, because it's it's getting aggravating. But sometimes just having the feeling that somebody else is there working can help motivate you uh, to work as well. So I've got some sounds built into that, uh, which is great. So it's a great the, application. Uh, custom one I created is called Spa and it has a thunderstorm, a creek and wind chimes that play. It's a very relaxing one. Uh, like if you're, you, you know, you're relaxing, um, for meditation is one example, or, you know, I guess like a bubble bath or something. Uh, this is one that I created for those situations. Um, and I, as I said, I did not know about being able to make a custom icon. Uh, so I did update mine with these, uh, beautiful wind chimes that are just kind of rolling back and forth. Uh, really cool. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I, I almost would love, uh, to be able to take that like full screen because I could see that being very meditative um, to to sort of watch as you are uh, like right now it's kind of drawing me and I keep looking at it like, oh, that's yeah. so nice. Actually, so I, I think that's something that. where uh, I, I can highly recommend if you've got a feature request for dark noise, emailing the developer. Um, there's information in the about section of the application as to how to get in touch with the developer. Um, and uh, he he's very responsive. So I bet, Mike, if you messaged him about that feature and asked he might make it a dark lapse feature. Um, you know, if he's got the I time on his hands to. and it's, it's, it's able to do that, but that sounds pretty cool. Um, so I, yeah, I really that. like the app. All right. Um, let's, oh, um, I wanted to briefly mention, so uh, this is a feature if people are testing out the public beta of iOS 15 um, or just are wondering about, you know, some of the features that are coming in iOS 15 whenever it launches later this fall, uh, one of those features is called background sounds. And so I wanted to briefly mention uh, what that is and how you get to it. Uh, if you launch the set, and this again is an iOS 15, if you launch the settings app, tap accessibility, and then you scroll down to audio and visual, uh, you will see a new section called background sounds. And what this does is it's a built-in way to have sounds playing in the background of everything that you're doing on your iPhone or iPad. Uh, So by turning that on, it will let you set this sound. And see, there are options here for how loud you want it to be, uh, whether you want it to be uh, playing in the background when media is playing, my suggestion is definitely, uh, because that's kind of the whole point of this, is uh, your brain having this focused sound in the background can be very helpful in maintaining focus and uh, you know, sort of uh, drowning out distractions. There are different sounds available, including balanced, bright, and dark noise, ocean, rain, and stream. And uh, then you can change the volume of the sound based on whether it's with media playing or without media playing, which is really cool. Um, But all of that comes together to give you kind of a a global uh, sound experience while you're doing other things, which these apps do do in some ways. Uh, But I, I like that you know, Apple has built in a level of this in iOS 15. So if that's of interest to you, you can definitely check that out. Um, let us take a quick break uh, as we've we've reached the end of the sort of sound I did just want section. to mention oh, uh, that in iOS yeah. 15, this is also in the control center. Um, so you can, you can add this to the control center. Um, so if I just pop into the control center, then there's the hearing option. And then inside of control center, I can turn background sounds on and off really quickly here uh, with the button at the bottom and then adapt everything as well, which is wonderful. I really like that. I've been playing with that a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not replacing dark noise, but it's certainly a great option. 
Um, I again, yeah, definitely doesn't replace those those other apps for sure. I I agree with you there. Um, all right, let's take a quick break. Uh, speaking of relaxing sounds, uh, let's take a break to relax and maybe sleep because this episode of iOS Today is brought to you by Casper. And folks, with Casper, you can love your tomorrow. The new Casper Cooling Collection has everything you need to sleep cool all night long. Casper's mattresses with new snow technology, hyperlight sheets, lightweight duvets, and breathable mattress protector, they're all designed to keep you cool and comfortable so you can't help but love your tomorrow. I think about all those folks that are dealing with heat waves um, in the U.S. and elsewhere uh, right now, and... Man, sleeping cool is incredibly important uh, for your sleep overall. Uh, tomorrow's a new day, and you can make the most of it with Casper's cooling collection. There's Casper's Wave Hybrid Snow Mattress, which keeps you cool for 12-plus hours by pulling heat away from your body for sustained temperature regulation, a cool-to-the-touch feeling, and a much-improved tomorrow. Better bedding makes for a better tomorrow, too, which is why Casper's Hyperlite sheets are designed with an innovative grid weave that lets air flow through for maximum breathability. The lightweight duvet provides optimal temperature control without sacrificing plush comfort, and Casper's breathable mattress protector, yeah, even a mattress protector that can cool you, who knew, improves the coolness of the bed even further by allowing air to flow between your body and the mattress. All of these are designed to work together to prevent overheating all night because cooler sleep means better sleep and better sleep means better tomorrows. It's absolutely true. Uh, there are several studies about how sleeping cool is not only helpful for your sleep, but is helpful for your metabolism. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, you can look up brown fat and sleep. Uh, really fascinating. I've talked a lot about how much I enjoy Casper. Um, I purchased my Casper stuff long before I ever joined the Twit Network, long before they were ever a sponsor of any of the shows that I did, uh, because I heard about them and heard that they made great stuff. And they do. My Casper mattress, my Casper sheets, my Casper pillow, all of that stuff. Love it all uh, because it genuinely just it's so comfortable and helps me sleep every night. And anytime someone asks me, uh, you know, it's time for a new mattress or it's time for a mattress, what should I get? I am always sending them to Casper. And I should also mention that, uh, as always, Casper offers free shipping and free returns. When it comes to a better night's sleep, Casper's new cooling collection has you covered. Focus on tomorrow and let Casper handle the rest. Explore Casper products, mattresses, sheets, pillows, and more at casper.com slash iOS today. And use code IOS today for $100 off select mattresses. That's code IOS today for $100 off select mattresses. Exclusions apply. See Casper.com for more details. Thank you, Casper, for sponsoring this week's episode of iOS Today. And, of course, for continuing to sponsor my sleep. I appreciate it. All right. Let us move on uh, to the next segment of sounds, uh, which anybody who's listening to this would be familiar with. These... Our podcast sounds. Yeah, I love listening to podcasts, Micah. I don't know about you, but it feels like a lot of my day is spent with uh, people talking in my ear, people I love, people I learn things from. And uh, one of the apps that I used to do that is an application called Overcast, uh, which, as people can tell, I'm on the, the beta for. Um, and uh, so Overcast has uh, the ability to create playlists. Um, you can add podcasts, of course. So if you, you search the directory and you search for iOS Today, it comes up with iOS Today audio. It does have the video feed here as well. Overcast is an audio-only podcast app, though. Um, so we've got another couple of picks um, for, for everybody as well. Um, but you can create uh, playlists and smart playlists. So it's Playlist is just what you think. You add particular episodes of particular podcasts in, and that's it. Um, but um, smart playlists, you can include podcasts, or you can work on an exclusion model where you can say, I don't want this podcast, this podcast, or this podcast in here, for example. Um, and then, you know, you can you can do that. You can have priority podcasts. So anything that should go to the top. So for example, automators definitely should go to the top. And uh, you can <laughs> pop that there. Um, you can also have additional episodes where if something wouldn't be included automatically based on everything that you've set, then you can specifically include certain ones. And similarly, you can exclude certain episodes. So if you know, oh yeah, I've listened to this one before. I don't really want that popping up again. You can you can exclude that. 
Um, and then you, you've got smart playlists. Um, and uh, of course, you can you can manage these and delete them. Um, and uh, yeah, I like it. Specifically, one of the features I like is that you can turn on and off continuous play. And this is something I toggle with being on and off. Uh, continuous play means when one podcast finishes, the next podcast episode will start based on whatever it is you're listening to. If you're listening to a podcast in a chronological order, it will go from this episode to the next newest episode. Or if you're listening in reverse chronological order, it goes backwards in time. Um, and of course, um, you know, if you're listening to a playlist or a smart playlist, it will just move on to the next item. Um, so you can toggle that on and off. And I, I do. Sometimes I go, I just want to listen to one episode of whatever. So I toggle this off. And then when it finishes, I don't get sucked into another podcast episode. Um, you can also choose um, to manage your downloads. So you can just say, I don't want 50 gigabytes of podcast saved on my iPhone. Thank you very much. I will stream when played. Or I want to just download things on Wi-Fi because I have a limited cellular connection. Uh, or I don't care. I have unlimited data, Wi-Fi and cellular, please. And another option in the settings is uh, the nitpicky details or are the nitpicky details. And this has features like smart resume. Okay. And smart resume, if you think of normal resume, okay, you pause something and then when you hit play, you start again from that exact same point. Okay. Smart resume will go back a little bit. Um, and how it goes back is based on how long you've been paused for. So if you hit pause, and then a couple of seconds later, hit resume. It's going to rewind just a very little bit. But if you pause and you come back a couple of hours later, it's going to rewind quite a bit more, say up to, I can't remember what the limit is, but I think it's 30 seconds or so. And it tries to look for a little gap in between words. So it's not going to find a sentence necessarily, but it's going to look for a pause between words. Um, and then it's going to try and insert you neatly there. So you don't jump into the middle of a word uh, when you come back, which I really like. And I find this is very useful because I do frequently have to pause while I concentrate on something. And then, you know, and then, it, you know, I, I come back and, oh, oh yeah, this, right. I now remember exactly mm -hmm. where I am because it's just rewound just by that little bit. You can also adjust how much seeking backwards and forwards goes by. Um, and uh, there's one tap play. So usually when you tap on a podcast episode um, in, in, the, in the list, it'll show you a big view. But if you turn on one tap play, you tap on it and it plays. There's also the option to add some stress to your life by putting an icon, a uh, badge number. Um, and I love that uh, Marco Armand, the developer behind this, specifically says it's adding stress to your life because I turned this on. And then immediately turned it back off because there are so many unlistened to episodes. I My podcast listening tends to be aspirational. I have those I listen to on a very regular basis and those that I, I don't necessarily uh, listen to on a regular basis. I've been I've added them aspirationally to get to when I have time. Um, there's also the option for remote episode skip. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just a great app. It's very solid. It works very well. It's free. Uh, there's an optional in-app subscription of $9.99 a year, uh, which gives you the option to upload your own audio to the Overcast servers. So for example, say you, you know a friend who read an audiobook and they've given you the files. Um, it does have to be DRM free, so no digital rights management, but you could upload that and then listen to it through Overcast. Um, similarly, if there is a membership feed, which unlike our lovely Club Twit feeds, doesn't give you a great URL, that you can just put into your podcast player, uh, then you can download those episodes and upload them. I use this for listening to podcast episodes of my own shows before they're released. So I just upload the file and then I listen through and I use Overcast Smart Speed. I play it back at a faster speed. I play it back at 2x because I recorded the show. So I know what's going on. I'm just checking that I've got all the good links and everything. Um, and so that's, you know, that's how I do that. Um, and also, you know, you can you can see in the, the storage how much data is being used here um, and, you know, what kind of data. So I've downloaded, oh, nearly 120 megabytes since uh, the 10th of June this year on cellular and uh, all data. Oh, that's some big numbers, 12.3 gigabytes. Um, hmm. I download a lot of podcasts, it seems, but it, it's great. Uh, I should say that the the um, apps, uh, the ads that you find in app 
um, are usually for other podcasts. Um, and it can be surprisingly good at recommending other podcasts to you that are being advertised. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's pretty good. And you might also see adverts for things like buying overcast t-shirts, stuff like that. Um, but uh, it's it's optional to subscribe in, if you want to. Um, and uh, you, can, you can listen to all the great shows there. It is audio only. Um, if you've got an M1 Mac, then you can have Overcast on the Mac as well. But other than that, it's iPhone, iPad, and even Apple Watch. Very nice. Very nice. Um, I wanted to mention another one. Uh, Leo and I have both talked about this before. It's our podcast app of choice. I've uh, used Overcast and uh, been you know, a longtime fan of that app. And um, I ended up switching from Overcast to Pocket Casts after I became are really good friends with the uh, co-founder of the company that makes Pocket Casts. And so I wanted to try out the app that he was, you know, making and ended up sticking with it because it's a fantastic app, uh, Russell Ivanovich of Shifty Jelly. And so this app is just, it's another option uh, for you if you're looking for a podcast application. Uh, what I really like about Pocket Casts is uh, as a person who is uh, you know a tech reporter on the regular? I have different um, different things that I need to to be able to use different platforms, and so uh, Pocket Cast is available on Android. It's available on iOS. It's available on the Mac. It's available on the web, and all of these sync. Uh, together, including my play, uh, my play history. So where I am uh, in a podcast is synced across. It's also got. Uh, you'll find that many of the podcast applications are um, feature parity across the board. So it's got all of the the. Uh, taking out bits that are silence and um, boosting the EQ for voices and all that kind of stuff is built in. Uh, and so it just comes down to a matter of, of taste in many ways on what uh, design and functionality works for you. This too has uh, options for playlists and filters. So you can find specific podcasts. Um, it's got that autoplay feature if you want to. It's got a queue so you can add, add uh, podcasts to your queue. It has a nice uh, built-in discovery feature, um, including like app, uh, podcasts that are trending, uh, as well as some um, s some editorial uh, adjustments that are made regularly. So you can see here uh, in the technically terrific section, there's uh, this week in tech podcast as well as Windows Weekly here. Oh, look, there's Mac Break Weekly as well. Um, and then some highlights of different networks, for example. You can browse by category. So all that information is available. And I like this at the bottom, too. It's global. So you can choose the region for your content um, to see what is trending in those different stores. Um, again, this is uh, just another option that's available to you. Uh, you it, has, it does have video. Uh, so if you are a video podcast listener uh, and viewer then uh, Pocket Casts is one option for that for sure, including if you're listening to iOS today. Um, it's got all the integrations that you would expect. So you can you know play your podcasts to Sonos and your ALEXA devices. Um, but as I said, my favorite thing for sure is the uh, cross-device sync. Uh, the fact that you know whether I pull it up on my iPhone or I pull it up on the uh, Pixel 3 XL that I have, um, it's right where I left off in those different places uh, and available in both of those places and it's familiar in both of those places uh, it is i love that um they are very aware of uh matching the platform that they're on so even though there's familiarity between the two the android version is built for android and the ios version is built for ios and you feel that in each of them so uh very clever design in my opinion um and uh very well made and you can download it for free. Uh, similarly to Overcast, you can pay a subscription service. And what that gets you uh, is a place to um, upload uh, content. And I can't remember what all the uh, the subscription service offers. And the reason I the reason I say that is because there's so much that's just available for free. So uh, you know, just downloading this app is going to get you most of what you want um, out of a, a podcast app. So yeah, that's Pocket Cast. Uh, available for free in the App Store. Yeah, it's a, a great application. Um, and there's one other one that I would like to mention um, because uh, 
Overcast, as I said, is audio only. And there is another application that I do use to, to watch video podcasts. Um, and that is an application called Downcast. And I know um, a lot of our listeners are using Downcast, so they're already familiar with it. Um, but it allows you to, to watch um, the uh, an episode of, say, iOS Today or Mac Break Weekly or This Week in Tech, which I'm going to be on this uh, this coming Sunday. Um, and so you can you can set things up so that you can, you know, download Mark for streaming or just straight up stream now. Um, if you've already got it downloaded, then it will, you know, just, you know, get on with it and play. And you might be able to see on my screen, they've kind of taken the artwork and just overlaid a very dark um, translucent layer over it on the um, and then put the notes on top of that. Um, and I'm going to pause that because otherwise Micah is very enthusiastically talking about last week's episode in my ear. Um, and Micah, I love you, but two of you at the same time is a little much, I think. A little much, um, at least, at least, At least while I'm trying to podcast and concentrate on everything. Uh, I particularly like at the top, I can go backwards and forwards by uh, 15 and, and uh, 30 seconds and forwards by 30 seconds and two minutes. All of this is configurable. And of course, it will sync everything. I don't have this set up very well on my iPhone because I usually watch on my iPad. I've been having some difficulty connecting my iPad up uh, for the show. So I, I'm just going to leave that one as it is. But it does have iCloud Sync. And you can, if you want to, not sync your podcasts between devices with iCloud Sync. But you could sync your playlists and the episodes or settings. And you can turn each of these on and off if you want to. You'll also see in the top right, there's always a button to just jump back straight to the player at any time. And uh, then if the, the episode is paused, then you've got the show notes right there, which is very useful uh, if you need the links to any of the apps that we talk about or something mentioned uh, in another show where they say it's in the show notes. Uh, that's where you can find it. Nice, nice. Um, oh, I realize I'm still on that screen. Um up next, we are talking about some. Uh, this is this is kind of awareness of sound, awareness of of audio. Uh, but before that, I just wanted to quickly mention. Um, so I, I I talked about it at the beginning of the show. I was um, one of the things I, when I lived in Missouri um, and in the Midwest in general. You will find, and I've, I talked a little bit about that on the show before. You will find that folks there uh, are not as um, distance sensitive as folks I found in other places. So in the Midwest, you often have to drive quite a distance in order to get to other people. So I would regularly find myself having to drive, you know, three hours um, to a place and back from a place in order to see my family on the weekend uh, on, you know, the occasions that I went home during uh, my time in, in college or, uh, you know, visiting friends who are across the state. And it was just a regular thing. And so I would listen to um, a mixture of audiobooks, of podcasts, and music uh, to pass the time while I was on the road. And one time, um, when my friend was getting married in, I can't remember where it was that we ended up going, but it was like a 14-hour road trip uh, to the to where we were going. And I uh, wanted to have, you know, plenty of music to listen to. But one of the things that I was hoping for was a way to listen to music in such a way that the music kind of transitioned um, between songs really well. And the, it's a thing that like DJs do where they can sort of match the beat and uh, properly transition into the next song. And I love that. But most of the time you whenever you're doing that, you only get um, you only get the kind of crossfade where it just drops one song down as it brings one song up. And there's no real thought to the mixture between the two. Uh, but I came across an app at the time called Serato Pyro and Serato Pyro was this incredible app where you could uh Connect it to your Spotify or your Apple Music account or uh, SoundCloud or what have you, and it would let you build a playlist. You'd pick a song uh, from your music library and give it access to your music library, and then it would look into your music library and arrange songs so that they could uh, transition between each of them. 
in this really nice way. And so it would go past just crossfading to beat matching and um, uh, the, 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 the tempo matching and would transition these songs very easily. And it would give you suggestions for songs that would be great to play after a certain one because some of them wouldn't sound great on the transition, but it would, uh, by hitting a button, it would properly arrange them so that it did sound good. Unfortunately, this app is no longer available. Um, I think it is because the of the music license uh, changes. Uh, these days, it's hard actually to find one of these apps that will actually do this. And so I just wanted to pour one out for Serato Pyro uh, because that was my favorite app for music listening playlists because of the way that it could beat match and transition between two songs so, so, so well. And I have looked for others. There are some like uh, DJ and there's another one that's like a, a playlist. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but there are a few out there that you can find, but they're more for DJs to use where they don't do it automatically for you. And it's not for just someone to create a playlist easily. Instead, it's for someone who knows what they're doing to um, mix tracks and mix between tracks. So I really kind of, it breaks my heart uh, to no longer have Serato Pyro uh, as an option because that app was a lifesaver on that 14 hour trip um, of being able to just listen to music and have it transition so smoothly. And as I said, the ones that I've tried since then, they just, they don't do what Serato Pyro did. Um, so I will say this, if anyone comes across an app that's anything like Serato Pyro, um, that is not, as I said, DJ, D-J-A-Y, um, then let me, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to hear about what you're using uh, because I would love to have that uh, that goes past just like the, the there are features in Apple Music settings and Spotify settings where you can crossfade between songs. This is not crossfading. This is next level um, smart transitions between songs that sound like they were meant to be there and sounds like a professional DJ is uh, mixing your mixing your playlist as you're going along. So um, it's a challenge I'm putting out uh, into the world. I'd love to hear about a replacement for Serato Pyro uh, that, that works. Um, yeah, that so sounds just, like uh, shed such a, for a that. great app. Yeah, hopefully somebody out there has the the skills and the knowledge um, to, to put that together if there isn't already a replacement for it because there should be something like that. Um, because, you know, live DJs are great, but it's really difficult to pack one in your car and take one with you. And I've heard that sometimes they object. Um, you know, you just pick up a DJ from somewhere and take them with you. You know, they, they might complain about that if you don't ask nicely first. Um, so, uh, but speaking of DJs, uh, Micah, um, you know, especially with COVID restrictions lifting, people are able to go back to our more normal lives, which includes going to events where sounds can be a bit louder. And the Apple Watch actually has the ability to measure noise levels. Um, and you can even add this as a complication. Now, I tried setting up a camera overhead to show my Apple Watch, um, and that was really difficult. So we're going to have to rely on the screenshots and the support documentation for this. Um, but you can um, set up the noise app on your Apple Watch and you, you need to enable monitoring. And then you will occasionally get notifications through that say, hey, it's really loud around here. Uh, you know, look after your ears, basically. Um, you know, when, once your hearing is affected, I've got a friend who's an audio engineer, uh, as he is well aware, if you do something that messes up your ears, then you're, you're messed up forever. And anybody with tinnitus knows it's very frustrating at times, which is why apps like Soundscapes and, and Dark Noise, as we mentioned at the top of the show, and even the background sounds on iOS can be very helpful because they will help not get rid of the, the tinnitus, but they will help uh, nullify its effects, at least on, on your brain. Um, but it's it's really useful to have this information. And I'm just going to pop up my iPhone here inside of the health app, because in the health app, there's a hearing section. And you can actually see over the course of, say, a year, um, you know, whether or not you've been exposed to incredibly loud volume levels all the time, or if it's just on an irregular basis. So if we look at the hours, then you can see, uh, you know, at um, say between 12 and 12.15, 12 there, there was some pretty loud stuff. I think that was while I was vacuuming and listening to music actually. Um, but uh, then if we, we go down, we see, you know, overall, it, it's it's not too bad. Most of it's fairly low. Um, and uh, some of this I did deliberately crank up 
uh, the volume on my headphones and I left them on the desk uh, earlier this week so that I would have some interesting uh, graphs and hopefully have a, a peek as you can see. Uh, that was actually last Sunday. Um, I was I was doing that because I thought at some point I'm going to need this on the iOS today. Um, but you can you can see all of this here. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's useful to have. Um, I personally like having the watch complication. Um, so I have a going out watch face uh, where I'm, you know, going to go to an event and it's, it's, I have it on there because if at some point I start feeling like, oh, I'm getting a headache, I can glance at my watch and go, well, it's because it's pretty loud in here. Uh, maybe I'll go take a break outside. Uh, so yeah, I, I love the fact that the Apple Watch has got this built in. Um, and you can even, um, you know, set up your your headphones to connect to this as well. So it will tell you um, if your, your AirPods or your Beats are too loud. It works best with uh, AirPods, EarPods and Beats, all varieties of AirPods and Beats. Um, but uh, yeah, you can also set max volume limits and so on in the settings. But uh, I don't think we need to go into that right now unless you would like me to, Micah. Uh, no, that's okay. We'll take a quick break here so that I can tell you about our next sponsor. It's Sennheiser. When it comes to earbuds, well, it's all about sound quality. And that's why you've got to check out Sennheiser because they make the best earbuds money can buy. And honestly, some of the best uh, music listening devices that money can buy. Uh, for the past 75 years, while other companies were focused on phones or tablets, I think you know who they're talking about there. Sennheiser has put sound first. And uh, that includes their new Momentum True Wireless 2s, which deliver the best listening experience and have been finely crafted for even the most discerning listener. It was funny, this morning as I was getting ready for iOS Today, I uh, knew that Sennheiser was sponsoring this episode and I said, um, oh, I need to grab my uh, my Momentum Wireless 2s. And I couldn't find them. And that's because I am using them regularly. And so I had placed them somewhere as I was using them, as opposed to them just being, you know, nice and tidy in the box. No, people, uh, I have been testing these and, it, you know, it's gone past testing now. They're just regular uh, in-ear headphones that I'm using. Uh, the Momentum True Wireless 2s, uh, the box comes with the uh, case itself. But as I always uh, talk about, I think that, Fit is so incredibly important uh, when it comes to headphones. And, and honestly, I'm not the only one who thinks that. Uh, anybody who knows anything about uh, in-ear headphones, fit is so important. And these come with multiple in-ear tips that you can install with the uh, earbuds so that they are exactly uh, the perfect fit and seal for your ears. Uh, this little, it's got this really nice uh, fabric over the case, they store inside of the case with a USB-C charger on the back, which is really nice. Uh, so I can plug these in and charge them with cables I have. And they're these little in-ear buds here you can see um, with this nice silver accent. So you pop these in your ears and you sort of twist them forward because by twisting them forward, it um, properly sits into your ear canal. And then from there, you can pair them and play them. Um, these have a free smart control app that you can download, uh, that you can adjust the sound so that you have just the right personal preference. And in fact, it has a built-in equalizer too. So you can adjust the sounds just how you want them. Uh, you can switch off your surroundings and dive into the impactful song or important episode with Yes!, these have a new active noise cancellation feature, uh, which is incredible so that you can drown out all that noise in the background and get this up to a 28 hour battery life. So these earbuds can last you all day. And if you do the math, then some, you can feel the quality of Sennheiser's earbuds and uh, you will know that they're top quality the second you put them on. Plus, they've also got over ear headphones and sound bars for all your audio needs. So once you've tried these out and you're like, oh my goodness, what have I been missing out? on. This is the best audio ever. Well, Sennheiser's got you covered in other places as well, which is why it's no wonder that CNET called the Momentum True Wireless 2s clearly superior sound quality to the AirPods Pro and the earbuds to get if you value sound quality over everything else. Um, I... These these are fantastic. Uh, they're super lightweight. They fit in the ear really well. And I think you'll be impressed with the sound quality uh, of these. You know, maybe blown away with the sound quality of these, depending on uh, whether you've had something that was this level of quality before. Sennheiser knows what they're doing when it comes to audio. And uh, it's very clear the second you try these out. So why settle for anything less than great sound? Come hear the difference with Sennheiser. Right now, 
for our first 100 listeners who go to Sennheiser.com slash podcast and use promo code iOS, you are going to get 15% off the Momentum True Wireless 2 earbuds or any of their other amazing headphones. That's 15% off when you go to S-E-N-N-H-E-I-S-E-R dot com slash podcast and use the promo code I-O-S. Yes, not just these uh, True Wireless 2s, but also any of the other headphones that are there. Super cool. Sennheiser.com slash podcast, promo code IOS, 15% off. Thank you, Sennheiser, uh, for your great music listening experience and for sponsoring this week's episode of iOS Today. All right. Uh, is it time to move on to the news, Rosemary? I believe it is. And there, there's quite a bit of news this week, all sorts of things, uh, with uh, everything from Apple Watch Parks to a cool new app, which has got some some funky features and, uh, yeah, some other stuff. Do you want to get started? Yeah, let's go. The first thing we've got here, um, this is interesting, and it's, uh, I think, part of the the overall warnings that we've been hearing about um you know, tech is chip shortages and, uh, you know, the component shortages and all these things that uh, this lovely pandemic we've all been a part of have uh, have caused. And so with that, some products that maybe you hadn't thought about are also being affected by um, these component and chip shortages. Um, and so there may be some uh, some some delay on new accessories. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So specifically, Apple Watch charging packs, not first party ones, but third party ones, appear to have been hit by the shortage. So things like the the ones from, I think it was Native Union, uh, I back ordered until August. I've had a look online. A lot of the ones that I've purchased previously have you know, they're they're not available on Amazon. They don't show up in the Amazon listings. I've gone to my order history and gone through from there and it just says currently unavailable. And it, it's not even the Amazon thing where order this and we'll deliver it when we can deliver it. It's a case of it's just straight up not available right now. Um, so that is, you know, I, I I wouldn't say it's a it's it's a serious, serious issue. But if you are looking to get an Apple Watch charger, then your best bet right now is oh, the Apple app. Apple Store itself because they don't seem to have a problem. But I have heard um, actually recently while I was buying my new car um, that Apple have got a team of people who are just out there buying chips. Like that is their entire job to source and purchase chips that are needed for all Apple products. And I wouldn't be surprised if smaller companies are having difficulties because the, the problem with the chip shortage is, you know, whoever gets there first and has the most money is, you know, going to get the chips. And we all know Apple is willing to put their money where their mouth is, hire the people to get there first, and then, you know, put the money down to get the chips when they need them. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's interesting. There are some third-party products that use these pucks that uh, are great, and some where it's like, I don't, there's not much difference from just using the one that kind of came with, uh, that came from Apple, uh, came in the box. And I've got one, um, well, I'll listen to all that, uh, from Apple that's, the charging puck on the one end and then it's USB-C on the other. Look at how short this cord is. It's You're just meant to like plug it into, I guess, the, you know, your MacBook Pro or other USB-C and then you you plug that or you set your phone, your phone, your Apple Watch on the other end. But it's just so funny to me how short this cord is. Um, <laughs> this is one of my favorite though, because it feels like I'm getting, you know, the most charge out of it as I, as I possibly can. And it doesn't mm -hmm. take up a lot of space, but there've been some clever uses from third parties of those uh, charging pucks. And so it is a little bit of a bummer that, you know, companies might have to take a little bit longer because I found those docking stations to be quite helpful. Um, yeah. It's, I think the, the, the biggest thing is Apple from the get go doing this, uh, proprietary charger. It's troublesome <laughs> because mm -hmm. you've got to design to that standard as opposed to, uh, you know, it's more recent devices where it's just Qi charging. I kind of wish that the Apple watch inherently supported Qi charging because there are some, you know, suggestions that if they enabled it, it could be possible. Um, but I kind of wish that they had designed to that or eventually kind of moved to that as an option. 
Yes. Yeah, I, I have the Satechi one that was actually pictured in the article that can plug into the side of an iPad Pro. Um, and that's one of the ones that kind of, it. I have a little case that I take with me with my iPad Pro in it and a, a charger and everything. And that's one that just lives in there because frequently if I'm there and I've got a long day on the iPad, then uh, I need to charge my watch and it's a great to just plug it into the side of the iPad and, uh, you know, in, enjoy the use of that. Um, so, uh, yeah, cause the iPad's got a pretty great battery life. So being able to tap that when you need to is a, a good feature. Yeah. Uh, you've talked about Transloader before, and it was an app that I ended up downloading per your suggestion. Uh, Transloader is an app that lets you sort of queue up downloads on your Mac. Um, but you have mentioned, uh, or you, you came across, um, as Transloader got an update, some yeah. integrations that you could check out that kind of yeah. improve upon the performance. Tell us about that. Yeah. So for people who don't remember, Transloader is an app for your iPhone or iPad and your Mac. And the whole purpose is that you've come across something, uh, you know, during your browsing and you think, I want to download that when I get back to my Mac. But as you and I both know, future us tends to forget what current us wanted to do. Um, and you can save it into a task management tool or whatever to help you do that. But that's still a task that you need to do. Um, and so an alternative to this is Transloader. You install the app on your Mac, you install it on your iPhone, iPad, et cetera. Um, and then when you find one of these links, then what you do is you just send it to Transloader and it will download it. And if you have multiple Macs, then you can choose which Mac you want to download it on. Um, and then, you know, you, you download it and voila, it's already downloaded on that machine when you get back. Um, and then if you've got, you know, automations running on your Mac, then it can do things. But there's another application called Downy on the Mac, which people might be familiar with. It's to help you download things like YouTube videos, things like that. It's very easy. You take, you copy the URL of whatever page it is. So say, for example, twit.tv slash iOS uh, slash, you know, pick an episode number. Uh, so for example, today's episode number 557, you paste that in um, and then it will download the video to your Mac. Well, Transloader now has integration with Downey, so you can send a link um, to Transloader wow. and it can pass it off to Downey. So you can go, hey, here's the web page, give me the video, and it will give you the video. Um, and I just love this feature. Um, it shows really that, you know, it's two indie app developers working together um, to, to set things up. Um, and so, you know, if you send it, say, a YouTube link, um, then you can pass it off to Downey. Um, and, you know, if you put twit.tv in there, then you can download our videos as well. But of course, you're better off using our RSS feeds for that because uh, that's what they're designed for. Um, but, you know, if you uh, if you need to download a whole bunch of videos at once, uh, then Downey is a great app for that. And I love the fact that Transloader integrates with it now. Yeah, that's really cool. I didn't realize that that was an option. And this comes up quite a bit. Uh, for me, where it's usually on my iPhone or iPad that I see a thing. And I used to have a shortcut that did this, and then that shortcut broke, and I've never found a replacement for it. Um, and so I would just always go to my Mac at some point and pull the link from the text message conversation I have with myself, which is where I save links, and uh, then do the download with Downey. So now having that happen automatically through Translator is really cool. And I'm definitely going to be making use of that for sure. So uh, I didn't realize that this was a feature. I saw the new link actions and file actions feature, but I wasn't really, um, I, you know, I only saw it in passing and didn't really pay attention to what it meant. Um, so that's definitely one of the integrations I will have to set up. Uh, I have opened this link as a new tab that I will get to a little bit later today to set that up for sure. Um, this next one is... Mwah, chef's kiss, I got to tell you, uh, for anybody who has any concern for personal privacy and uh, protection, data protection online, um, I think you're going to like this next thing. It's that um, Apple in iOS 15 has announced a new feature. Uh, actually, I should say across the system has announced a new feature. Uh, it's called iCloud Private Relay. And um, if you would like to learn more about iCloud Private Relay. I had an interview on uh, Tech News Weekly with Renee Ritchie, uh, who did a really good job explaining iCloud Private Relay, what it is, what it isn't. And you can also go to youtube.com slash Renee Ritchie, where he did a whole video on iCloud Private Relay. Um, it's sort of a VPN, but not quite a VPN. It's a little bit of a, um, of a, a little bit like Tor, but not. Basically, 
what it does is it helps you um, browse the internet without a, uh, a, a ISP and an end uh, user being able to kind of track you across the web. Um, and we won't go into super detail about how that all works. As I said, those are two places you can go to learn more about it. But the important thing is uh, advertisers seem to be concerned that this iCloud private relay feature is going to put an end to what we call fingerprinting. And this makes me very happy because uh, fingerprinting, I think, is one of the, the uh, most common situations that I uh, deal with as someone who knows anything about technology where family members go, uh why is this happening? Or friends go, uh, why is this happening? And I, you know, just the other day I saw somebody kind of complaining about this. It's the thing where people are wondering, uh, if their apps are listening to them. Um, so with fingerprinting, what happens is as you visit one website, uh, so it, you know, it doesn't matter what website we'll just call it. I don't know. Um, yellow, yellowbunnies.com. You go to yellow bunnies. Please don't go to that site. I don't know what that is, but you go to that site. And while you're there, you're liking certain things and clicking certain things. And that website may get your IP address. Uh, it may, if you log in, uh, if you like something and then you want to share it on Twitter, it gets your Twitter information. If you, uh, you know, share it to your Facebook page then it gets your Facebook information. And then as you go to other sites and you do other things, it's collecting that as well. And over time, all these little bits of data get combined into one thing to create a fingerprint, to create an identity of you and all of the stuff that you like, all the sites that you visit, all the places you go, all the things you spend money on, it all comes together uh, with these data brokerage firms. And then they get this impression of who you are and then can use that to serve you up ads that are more personalized and more focused on you. But this is also the situation where um, if you are at a friend's house or a family member's house and you are using their Wi-Fi, then you have the same public IP as them when you're visiting these sites. And so then their information data kind of gets linked to your information data. So then you go home and suddenly there are uh, ads for you showing um, the thing that you talked about, you know, maybe going to Disneyland and you're like, I did not look up anything about Disneyland. How does it know that I was thinking about going to Disneyland? Well, if your friend was looking up things about Disneyland and you were connected to their Wi-Fi, then that fingerprint stuff is kind of rubbed off and you have it in your profile now too. So with iCloud private relay, you have, uh, you, you essentially kind of put a, a, at the, at the very least a translucent, if not completely opaque, a translucent uh, curtain between you and all these different uh, firms that are trying to collect information on you. And so it helps to obscure you and make it less targeted, less likely that they're going to know who you are exactly and what sites you're visiting, what your interests are. Um, so with it, we should hopefully see um, a lot less of that personalization uh, that takes place. Although it is important to point out as uh, Renee did in talking about this, that this does not mean that on sites where you are within, uh, you know, a first party that's tracking you. So especially something like Facebook, Facebook, you're logged in on your account. And so all of the things that you do are going to be linked to you as your name. But where that helps is when you go to other places where you're not logged in, then it's not as easy for Facebook's data to be connected to the rest of the stuff that you're doing in other places. So I'm excited that it's going to get more difficult. I've been using iCloud Private Relay in uh, the beta and um, I ended up, I mentioned this before too, I turned it off because it has resulted in some slowdowns. This is still beta, so I'm not surprised uh, as they're working out everything. Um, but I'm curious, have you used the iCloud Private Relay? Uh, I have used iCloud Private Relay. As you mentioned earlier, there are problems. I was trying to pick up a parcel today. There was supposed to be QR code loading in the DPD app on my phone. 
the one thing that did not work, loading the QR code in the DPD app on my phone. Um, and of course, I went to settings to try and disable it and it crashed and it wouldn't let me do it. Fortunately, loading everything in the browser worked just fine as a workaround. Uh, but I need to go ahead and disable that once I finish rebooting my iPhone again later um, to, to try and make sure it stays off. Because I found not only you know, this is the whole problem with being on a beta, okay? Everything breaks from time to time and that is to be expected. That is normal. That's why it's not just available for everybody today. Uh, I found it turns itself back on, Micah. Um, so if you've got a way of turning it, it off and duct taping it off, uh, please, uh, because it keeps breaking things. And the vast majority of the time I am on my home network or my 4G and it's fine. Um, so uh, yeah. I do actually have a tip for that. Stay off. Oh, um, good. Please share. Yeah. yeah. So if you launch the uh, settings app and you go to search and you type in private relay um, and then you tap on that, the first couple of times I found that it actually, uh, it'll, I'll show you, it'll take me to the page where I'm supposed to go. So I tapped on that and you can see it's taking forever to actually go to the page. Yeah, um, same. I did it twice and it didn't show up. And then the third time it finally showed up as one of the options under iCloud and then uh, turning it off there. And then I had to go into each of uh, the sections. So I had to go into um, Wi-Fi. And, and you know this one. Uh, you go into Wi-Fi, for example, and then you tap the little I, and then there's iCloud Private Relay turned on for that. And then I also had to go into uh, Cellular and tap on my data and turn off iCloud Private Relay there. When it was uh, turned... I, the first time I did it, I just turned it off for my Wi-Fi network and for my cellular network, but didn't turn it off in um, the actual iCloud section. And that's where it kept turning back on. But by right. first going and turning it off uh, via that search option and then going and turning it off those other ways, that finally has made it stick. The duct tape seems to have stuck. So um, thank you I very will... much for that. <laughs> yeah, that, I was it's, doing it's it the easy. wrong way around. It's one of those things, you know, especially while stuff's in beta, I'm sure I'm going to file feedback on that. And that's a reminder, by the way, for anybody who's using a beta and goes, huh, this isn't working as I would expect, or this seems broken file feedback. There's a feedback app on your iPhone and your iPad and your Mac. Um, you can go to apple.com slash feedback to send them feedback if you can't find the feedback app. Um, uh, but, you know, file feedback on anything that's broken, please. Uh, because, you know, anything that is broken, you know, you, you should be sending feedback on it. That's the whole point of the beta process. Absolutely. What's next? Sorry, I'm, I've scrolled down, so I'm missing it. Um, oh, the uh, the Notes app. Um, uh, do you want to tell us about some of the upgrades that are taking place in the Notes app and what people can look forward to there? Yeah. So one of the things that people have been struggling with with the Notes app in recent years is ways to organize their notes. So we got folders and folders are a good start. Um, but the problem with folders is a note has to live in this folder or that folder or the other folder or just not in a folder at all floating around free. Um, and folders are great where you have strict categories that this falls into, but sometimes a note can be applicable in multiple areas and sometimes you, you want to pull it up. So say, for example, um, a, a packing list for a specific trip. Well, you want to see it in your packing lists in general, but you also want to see it in the trip information. And so for that, tags are better. Um, and so now in the Notes app on your iPhone, you are able to create tags. I'm just going to open the Notes app on my iPhone a second um, and show everybody how you can do this. Okay, so you can see I've got some folders here and, you know, some of them uh, people might even uh, be aware of what they are, but I'm just going to create a new note. Um, and so I will start this with a very traditional hello world. But now if I type a hash um, or a pound sign for people who call them pound signs, pound signs here in the UK mean something different, um, then it's gone gray. And this is kind of hard to see because I don't have humongous font size on this device. Uh, but if I type now... Um, and uh, I, I typed that wrong. Uh, so I'm going to try that again because I can't spell the word podcast today. There we go. So now when I hit space, it turns yellow. Okay. And if I do done uh, and then, you know, it's it saved. Um, it, it's warning me the notes not supported on some of my devices because not all of my Macs are running Monterey yet uh, because I didn't want Micah to kill me. Um, but now here at the bottom, you can see I've got all tags, 
uh, which if I tap it takes me to all of the notes with tags or I've got my just my podcast tag. So anything tagged with that podcast. And then you can search specifically within this. So if I search for hello, then it comes up with, you know, a couple of options with hello in. Um, there's there's nothing to worry about there. But, um, you know, you can also view as a gallery um, and... Uh, Again, feedback. I'm going to take a screenshot of that right now because this overlay shouldn't be happening. Um, but uh, yeah, so now I can do a little gallery view. Um, you can also change the sort order and you can create smart folders using um, this. Um, I'm not sure if all of these notes show up on non-iOS 15 devices because I am a silly person who should probably not have done this, but I upgraded all of my devices to iOS 15 already. Um, because if, I, if something's broken, I want it broken every everywhere. Um, and uh, it means that my shortcuts are less broken in some ways at the very least. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, uh, um, you know, Notes is working pretty well with these tags um, and I'm really enjoying them. People who've been using Bear and so on because they have tag support, well, they can have another look at Notes if they want to. Um, you know, obviously Bear has still got plenty to recommend it, same as Drafts, which has um, tag support, the Ulysses, all of these other applications that you can use for writing and note-taking. Um, but it's great that the Notes app has this as well and it's coming to reminders too. So it's, uh, you know, good to see tags everywhere across the operating system. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. And then the next one. Um, so app clips is a thing <laughs> that's uh, that's been around for a little while, but I have not seen a whole lot of uh, apps take advantage of them. Um, and I think part of that is because app clips were designed uh, particularly in kind of out and about situations. Uh, one of the great ways that they were described was it, a quick way to use a portion of an app without having to download it. And so the example that I really like is at a parking meter, where instead of having to download the parking meter for this uh, this company, I can just uh, scan a code and up pops a little option with Apple Pay to pay for my parking. And I don't have to worry about getting the app in total uh, and using that. Or whenever you go to um, a, a grocery store and you are you want to use the loyalty card, but you don't want to have to download the whole app. Well, there's an app clip that lets you uh, make use of that without having to download the whole app. So this is great for multiple reasons. One, convenience. Two, storage space on your device. And three, uh, for folks with lower data plans. Uh, all of those things are what make app clips really nice um, to, to use. And in iOS 15... Uh, there's going to be even more integration uh, for folks to use uh, app clips. And uh, one of those is through uh, showing or displaying a full uh, screen card that will have the app clip stuff that you want. So uh, instead of it just being sort of a thing that you scan, you can kind of tap on that and uh, use the app clip uh, right from that screen, which is uh, pretty handy as uh, another option for using app clips. Yeah. Uh, app clips are something I've yet to see in the wild myself. Um, I, it's one of those things, I have a feeling they're out there. Um, but thanks to this whole pandemic thing, I've really tried to not go anywhere um, for the last year and a half. So maybe as restrictions start lifting and my my second COVID jab is in a couple of weeks, uh, I will start to see these places. But uh, I'm, I'm going to cross my fingers that I see them and uh, that they, uh, they can indeed do more um, as uh, things progress. Yes. Um, and then last, Epic Games and Apple uh, continue on. Uh, and now it's in Australia. Uh, so these cases are cropping up all over the place as Epic Games and Apple continue their antitrust uh, battle. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm not surprised to see this crop up in Australia as well. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So Apple actually originally stopped this going forward in Australia um, because it, they argued that it was already being decided in the US, but Epic has now managed to get that overturned. Now I'm not a lawyer. I'm not really familiar with this. I've not been following it that closely because at the end of the day, what precisely happens during the proceedings, while interesting, is not as important as the eventual ruling from it because, you know, whatever the ruling is, you know, is whatever the ruling is and that decides how things will work from then on. Um, so, um, yeah, it's it's interesting that they've, they've managed to get that overturned. 
Um, and uh, what will be very interesting is if they get different results in different countries um, and uh, different locales. So let's let's wait and see what happens there. All righty. Um, now it is time to move on to Shortcuts Corner. Folks, this is the part of the show where people write in with their shortcuts requests and Rosemary Orchard provides shortcuts answers. Up first in Shortcuts Corner is uh, a Shortcuts Corner request from Dave. Dave writes in, hello, Micah and Rosemary. Nice job you two do on the iOS Today show. Hey, thanks, Dave. Uh, I have an Eve Energy Monitor that my washing machine is plugged into. How can the Eve Energy Monitor send a message to my iPhone using the Eve app or the HomeKit app when the washing machine is finished? Is there a better way to do this? Thanks for your help, Dave. Oh, this we know this one. This is Dave from Miss, uh, Mississauga, right? Yeah, so this is actually a question Dave sent in last week. Sorry, I thought I put the correct one in the show notes. Uh, he sent in a follow-up email, either way, um, to say, you know, thank you. Possibly the longest ever answer in Shortcuts Corner to date. Probably right there, Dave. Probably, and apparently, Mikey, you did you did good credit uh, with the name of the location in Canada. I'm ad living oh, yeah. here because I'm remembering this off the top of my head. Um, so, in his update, he asked specifically whether or not a vibration sensor could be used on washing machine because he's got one on his dryer. Um, and so, for people not familiar, this is a, a vibration sensor. This is actually the one he he mentioned. It's the Aquara one. This one usually actually is attached to my chair right here because it's pretty good at noticing when I'm sitting here, even if I'm a little too still and the hue motion sensor up here doesn't notice me. Uh, this one notices little movements on my chair and is pretty good at picking that up. And so it marks my office as occupied so that I don't end up sitting in the dark, which would not be good while I'm, you know, recording iOS today. Um, so um, he wanted to know whether or not this could work. Um, and so I've tried this um, and I would love for people themselves who've already got a vibration sensor to try sticking one on their washer um, and see whether or not they can do this. I have found that this uh, as a solution is problematic. So what it does mm -hmm. is this sensor has actually got a couple of sensors in it. It can sense vibrations. It can also sen uh, sense like it being picked up and it being tilted. So you could say attach this to a jewelry box so that when the lid was lifted, you get a notification. So say, for example, you've got you know, expensive jewelry and you want to know if somebody picks it up or takes it somewhere, it'll send you a push notification through HomeKit. I have found the problem with this is um, there is the option inside of the, the home app automations to say when the vibration, when motion stops, okay, because this just shows up as motion, whatever kind of motion that is. I found the problem with that is either it doesn't run or it runs too quick, uh, runs too frequently. So for people who aren't uh, who don't really know what a washer does. It doesn't just rotate the drum the entire time the washing is going, right? It fills, it lets things sit. So there will be a vibration while it's filling. And then while things are sitting to soak, there will be no vibration. And then it'll spin and let things sit to soak and so on and so forth. So you've got multiple mm -hmm. different uh, periods of vibration versus no vibration um, in a washer. A dryer is much more reliable because it dries which involves spinning, and then it stops, and that's it. But I found that when, when motion stops, it doesn't work very well with these. Um, and I would really like it to. And so I'm hoping that some of the wonderfully smart people in our audience have been playing with this kind of thing. Maybe they've attached it to something else. I'm playing a little bit with Home Assistant myself and integrating things back into HomeKit. Uh, Home Assistant, for people not familiar, is an entire system of automations, which is kind of an alternative to HomeKit, usually targeted at running things on your local network. And you can get things back into HomeKit from Home Assistant and actually things out of HomeKit into Home Assistant. Um, so you can use it in addition to or instead of, depending on how you want to do things. Uh, but I would love to find out from other people if they successfully use this on their washer. I personally have given up. I'm trying something with um, a now discontinued TP-Link Casa um, plug to see whether or not that works. I struggled with the Eve Energy Monitor to get things working reliably outside of last week's um, shortcuts craziness that I demonstrated. Uh, so anybody who's got solutions for that, please do share them because uh, I, I would love to know a, whether or not you've managed to get this working with the, the motion stopping, or B, if you've got another better solution for Dave. 
Yeah. So I made the mistake of installing one of those on my washer. And what you've said is exactly right. Uh, because it stops in between, it ended up not working uh, as a way to monitor the the washer. I know Matthew Casanelli, um, because he uses the same uh, settings for each load, uh, just has a um, NFC tag on there that basically just sets a timer. Um, for me, though, depending on what I'm putting in the washer and how much I'm putting in the washer and all that kind of stuff, I do different loads on the regular. So I can't just do an NFC tag uh, for, for me. Um, but yeah, that's that's the reason that the vibration sensor doesn't work for the washer. My one recommendation um, is that uh, folks consider an outdoor uh, plug for their uh, for the the washer because an outdoor plug tends to be rated at a higher um, electricity. I don't know exactly the terms for all of it, but they are rated higher for that kind of thing. And so uh, if you're worried about, you know, the thing burning out or something um, with the washer, uh, then an outdoor plug is going to be better for that. And then also because it's a washer, there's more chance of water being involved. And so an outdoor plug that has energy monitoring uh, options is uh, going to be better than one of the less uh, rated indoor plugs that don't have all of that functionality. So uh, that might be the way to go for, for doing that. But yes, definitely. Um, unfortunately <laughs> it's, it's a uh, vibration sensor is not great for, for washer. Um, all right. This next one comes from Joseph. I'd like to have automations that normally run when I'm home to not run when I'm not home, but that adds a level of complexity I just don't know how to program. For example, I have a set of fans that turn on and lights that turn off when I enter into bedtime mode, but Joseph would like for them to not do those things when Joseph is not home. Is there a way to do that with the, the stuff that's available for folks to use? There is. So some people in the chat have already had a go at this because, uh, so uh, Joseph posted this in our, our Club Twit Discord channel, uh, which is a great place to share things. One of the many options to, to send us feedback and questions. Um, and so some people had a go, but there's actually a solution built into the home app, Joseph, which is very easy to do. So I am just going to pop open my iPhone right here. Um, and uh, so you can see my iPhone. This is the automations tab inside of the home app. And I've got an automation here that runs at 5 a.m. daily. And so if I tap into this um, and see in the trigger, so I've got a time trigger here, and this works the same with, you know, uh, things turning on and off and so on. If you look at the bottom, there's this people option. And if you tap on this, then you can say, when I am at home. And that's all you need to do. That's it. Very simple. You don't need to convert to a shortcut. You don't need to do anything crazy and complicated. You just tap this option. And then when you go back, you'll see 5 a.m. daily only when I am at home. Or in your case, with your, your fans and, and everything in the bedroom, that will probably be at, say, 9 p.m. or whatever. Um, then, you know, so that's that's how you do it. It's very simple, very easy to do. If you want to change it later, um, then you can say, you know, for example, when I'm not at home, run this one or just off and just always do this. Now, personally, I like to uh, set all of my speaker volumes to the same volume, nice and low at five o'clock in the morning. So if I've had something, you know, playing quite loudly the previous evening, I don't get deafened when my morning playlist comes on. So I'm going to leave <laughs> that one as is. Um, but that's how you do it. It's uh, relatively simple to do. I, I hope that this this helps and uh, I'm sure it will uh, give some other people some ideas. Uh, just as a note, if you have multiple people in your home kit home, it might say when no one is at home, um, when anyone is at home, and then there should also be the when I am at home option. Um, so for example, if you live in a, a multi-person house where everybody's got their own rooms, then you can just run your automations when you're at home, or you can just say, don't do this when anyone is at home or when no one is at home. So there we go. Nice. A simple solution, which is awesome. All right. This next uh, bit is uh, just some feedback or question. Uh, it comes from Mike. Mike writes, is there a way I can have photos from my iCloud storage put into like a keepsake book? I've wanted to do something nice for my grandkids and give them a book to remember our vacation. Uh, Mike, I love this question because there are so many options out there that are available to you. Um, and some of them will actually, uh, sync very easily with your, um, iCloud account. Um, if you have a Mac, um, you can actually launch the photos app and you can use it with an app called, and I'm trying to remember now, let me find it here. 
Um, where did that go? Uh, oh, there we go. Projects. Um, I believe the app is called Memento, uh, if I remember correctly. And here, I'll, we'll pop open the App Store so that I can get the right one. Uh, because Apple used to have this built in as a feature that you could use. And um, unfortunately, they ended up um, sort of separating themselves from this uh, option where it was an internal Apple thing. But that company still exists as a separate company, so you can get the stuff that's there already. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Motif, M-O-T-I-F, and it is the print studio that Apple um, used to use as its way for creating um, books. So uh, when you, um, and this is specific to the Mac, but the, there are also apps on the App Store, and I'll talk about those in a second. Um, but if I go on the Mac and I go to my photos library um, and then you look on the left side, there's a toolbar and there's an option for projects. Uh, if you create a new projects, it will show you a, a page that says, uh, Choose file, create to begin making your book, calendar, card, wall decor, slideshow, or more. Visit the App Store to explore the many extensions available for creating projects. That link will show you Mameo Photos, Motif, Milk, uh, Picta, and Friedman Print. And then there are some options for hang, uh, you know, photos that you can hang on the wall, and then card options as well, calendars. But I know that you're looking for a way to create a memory book. So this is a great way to use the built-in photos library to actually print a book and have it show up um, and be able to create it right there in your iCloud photos library. Now, these apps are also available, as I said, on the App Store. So you can go and get Motif uh, on your iPad, for example, and download that as well. Um, and be able to use that as, uh, as the, the tool that you want to use for, um, for creating your book. So I, I want to make sure, I want to make sure that I got that right. Cause it's either Mameo or it's motif that were. For people who are wanting to learn how to do more with the photos, um, uh, app in general um, on iOS and on macOS. Uh, Jason Snell, uh, who uh, is hosting This Week in Tech this week, um, is, uh, has, has written uh, Take Control of Photos book. I know he's writing a new one uh, or updating it. I'm, I'm not sure exactly which uh, because, of course, Apple once again have changed things. Um, and just like I have to do a new Take Control of Shortcuts, he has to do more on Take Control of Photos. Uh, but he's included uh, options about this in there. And you can download a free sample of the book and uh, have a look um, to, to see maybe if you can, uh, learn something else, uh, from, uh, it, because I personally found the book incredibly helpful and I gave it to my dad who read it and then said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with Photoshop, um, and, and Adobe bridge. Cause that's what he knows. And he's happy with it, but I won't judge my dad for that, but, uh, I'm glad that the book is, uh, available for everybody. Ah, uh, here we go. Um, I believe it's Mameo photos, um, that is the company uh, that, that offers it. Yeah. Okay. So it's, I, I can't remember if I said motif, but it's M I M E O photos. Um, that company is the one that creates, uh, the books that are the same as the ones that, uh, Apple used to make. And as someone who ordered Apple photo books before in the past, they are incredible quality, well worth it. Um, I, you know, have created books since then from Mameo and they are really good. So, uh, I think that's going to be your best bet if you want to have a, a top quality book, but I should also note that I've ordered some from, um, Amazon as well, uh, as a mother's day gift to my partner's, uh, uh, grandmother and aunt and, uh, I created books for each of them from Amazon photos. And those were really, uh, high quality. So honestly, Mike, I really think that no matter what, um, what place you go, like a lot of the, the main suppliers for these, be it Amazon or, uh, the different apps that do this, or Google also has one. If you have your stuff synced with Google photos, uh, they can help you with this, but with Mameo and motif and those ones, uh, there's integrations built in so that whenever you open the app, it says, can we have access to your photo library? So it's very easy to go in and then create these right from that. And then there are other options too. So you might find, Oh wow, I'd actually like to create a magnet. Um, I have got some magnets on my fridge from Mameo. I, I think, was Mameo. Again, I've used a lot of these and they all have different books and they all have been great. So it's uh, the, the, the parallels between them is kind of, uh, incredible that, you know, they all have features that you would want and expect. Um, 
and all have looked really good uh, to me. So the quality I think you're going to find is as long as you're ordering from one of these companies that Apple suggests uh, – you, or as I said, I'm suggesting Google Photos or Amazon Photos, uh, which also have their own options. Um, you'll be happy with those. Uh, let us know what you end up going with. I'm, I'm curious. I'd like to hear that. Yeah. All right, folks. Up next, it's time for App Caps. And now it's time for App Caps. I'm bringing back the sad elephant. Folks, this is the part of the show we call the App Cap segment where we share our picks of the week. These are apps or items that we are digging that we want to share with all of you. And in order to honor our picks of the week, we wear caps atop our head. Silly caps, cool caps, and everything in between. Today I'm wearing an elephant. It's kind of a sad elephant, in my opinion. Um... And only vaguely. I mean, a stroke's like pointing upwards. Wait, is it is it is it a boy elephant, a girl elephant, or a they elephant? I have no idea. I haven't asked them. Um, okay. And they, then, then they we'll could, go with them. They could use some. Uh, uh, I don't know baking soda for. I mean, those are some really yellow tusks. I'm not used to seeing yeah. uh, such yellow tusks. All right, Rosemary Orchard, tell us uh, or describe the cap atop your head, and then tell us about your pick. Well, the cap that's on my head is a summer hat, which I actually wear. Um, and I thought, you know, it's it's summery-ish over here. It was threatening a storm earlier. The sun has come back. It's quite warm, as you can possibly tell if you're watching the video feed, because I'm wearing a summer dress. Um, and uh, this, this hat is great for keeping the sun off of the back of my neck. Um, and my pick this week is not an app. But it's a solution to something that Micah mentioned a while ago because he picked a folio case, which was a lovely folio case. But as you mentioned, Micah, sometimes you don't want a folio case. So this is an iPhone 12 mini and uh, this, this case comes in all sizes for the iPhones. And this is the OtterBox um, MagSafe wallet. Okay, so you open it and there, there's three card slots. The bottom card slot has got a, um, a, a thumb thing so that you can easily slide the card out. So whatever you need access to most frequently lives in there. Usually that's my driver's license. I pop this card in the front. But what I really like about this, aside from the satisfying thunk of the magnet when it wraps around to close your phone, is that, oh, I can just mag save it off. And so you can have the beauty of the folio case without having to have a folio all the time. Now, this is um, an OtterBox case that I've got right here, but I've tried this with um, some, some regular Apple cases as well, um, and it works pretty well. Any very, very skinny case might not work super well for this, um, I've discovered, um, but a, a, a regular size case or a chunkier case, like any of the ones from OtterBox, uh, should work really well. Um, and I have to say, this is a great solution for me because it allows you to still use Qi charging on the back. Uh, a MagSafe charger, um, if you've got an Apple MagSafe charger, um, which is, you know, got very strong magnets in, that's going to work quite well. If you have a standing MagSafe charger, it will work, but your phone may not feel the most secure. So I've, I've popped it on a stand on my desk and it is charging through the MagSafe wallet through the phone, which is pretty great. Um, but, you know, obviously it's going to get a little bit warmer there when it does that because, you know, it's passing the uh, information through. But because this just MagSafe's right off, you don't need to do that. And you can just pop your phone back on the MagSafe charger and voila. And you uh, can carry this around with you if you like. Um, now, I did test because, of course, I knew we were going to get the question. Apple MagSafe wallet, can I stick it on the back? The answer is Yes. You can stick the Apple MagSafe wallet on the back of this, but it is going to slide off a lot more easily than it will slide off the back of the phone. Uh, I found the best way to get the Apple MagSafe wallet to stick on the back of a phone is to stick it on the back of a silicon case uh, like this one here. Um, and then it's it's going to be pretty difficult to get off unless you oh, specifically try to magnetic. slide it. Yeah, so it's grippy and magnetic. So silicon cases are best for that. But if you did need to stick the Apple MagSafe wallet to the back of this one, you can do it. Um, yeah, uh, this or is you the can mini, slim just down on to the be cards clear. You carry yeah, you. yeah, slim down <laughs> on the cards you carry. Use something like Stow Card or similar to, to try and get all the cards that you can onto your phone. Um, but I love the fact that this easily uh, goes onto the phone. Um, and uh, it's it's pretty easy to get on and off. And uh, I still get my little splashes of color pop through uh, if such when I want and need them to. So yeah, this is a great pick. It's $45 from Otterbox. They do them in mini, 
uh, 12, 12 Pro, and then of course, max sizes. Um, and uh, I, I got the max one as a gift um, for somebody who usually uses a max phone. It works great. Um, and uh, yeah, so I can recommend this personally. Um, and it gives you the folio without a permanent folio case. Love it. Love that idea of being able to just easily pop it off. Um, mine doesn't as easily come apart. I, I'm still using that because the handiness of having those cards there and not having to bring a bunch of extra stuff with me is really nice. But this would uh, sort of fall into both areas where it easily connects, easily disconnects. And so it's the best of both worlds there. Very cool. Um, mine is an app that we actually, oh, by the way, I'm wearing an elephant on my head. Uh, I call it a sad elephant because it's got these tiny little eyes that don't really look quite elephanty. The ears are a little small. The trunk doesn't hang down, uh, which is I, how I think of an elephant, but I guess that's so that it's not in your face. And the tusks are a little long slash discolored. Basically, <laughs> this was a very cheap party hat that I bought for iOS today and I call it the sad elephant. Um, <clears throat> but th that aside, I want to talk about an app that made me happy. Um, it's an app we talked about, I think it was during the um, Apple Design Awards. And uh, I brought it, I'm bringing it back up because I finally got a chance to use it the other day. So this is an app called Be My Eyes, which anyone can download for free in the App Store. And Be My Eyes is a way for uh, folks with low or no vision to be able to uh, request assistance with uh, cited tasks. So for example, if someone's at a store and they are trying to get the right milk, um, they can quickly call someone who's a volunteer, uh, to, uh, show up in a video call and then you can help them walk through the steps of, uh, or, you know, pick out the right, the right milk that they're looking for. Um, so, oh yeah, there's a, there's a video kind of showing, uh, how it works, but, um, there are quite a few more, uh, volunteers than there are uh, folks with low or no vision. Uh, 4 million, here I'll actually show, uh, 4,903,414 volunteers to 317,133 uh, folks with low or no vision. And so whenever you first get the app, you sign up as either a person who um, is looking for assistance or a person who is well, who wants to provide it. And then uh, you'll get a notification if you're a person who wants to provide it, uh, letting you know that someone is asking for help. So the other day, um, it was actually, I was producing uh, Windows Weekly at the time. And during uh, the show, I got a call and I was like, well, sorry, sorry, Windows Weekly. I have to take this. This is so cool. And I, I can't wait. Um, and so that was the first time that ever since I got the app, whenever we talked about it on iOS today, the I, that I got the call, I answered it. A very kind person answered um, and asked for some help identifying a, a product. And so it was just, it was a video. And what's super cool is that you have control over the, uh, over the other person's um, f uh, light on their phone or torch, depending on how you describe it, uh, depending on where you are. And so you can turn on the light so that you can see a little bit better. And so I was able to help identify the thing that they were looking for. And then that was it. You know, I was able to uh, hang up and, and be on my way. And it just felt really cool to be able to help somebody uh, who needed it. And so, yeah, I'm kind of always at the ready to get a notification uh, from Be My Eyes who, for someone who's asking for help with something. So, yeah, it's a, it's a video calling app specifically for folks to help those with low or no vision. Um, I the, the assistance was really like there was no pressure to it or anything like that. It all just felt really, it was good. It all was just a really good feeling and a really good experience. So, um, definitely suggest, uh, folks if they would like to, to give that a go, uh, and sign up as a volunteer for be my eyes again, available for free in the app store. Um, and I don't know, I just found it to be very worthwhile, uh, immediately. Yeah. Agreed. I love the fact that there are so many more volunteers than there are people that need help because that just goes to show that, you know, there are great people out there in the world and uh, lovely people helping other people. Yes. And I, I think my next, like, I want to figure out how to let more people know about this for people who need it. Um, because yeah. I think that, uh, you know, the, advocacy for, cause I was telling my partner about this app and he's like, see, it, it be, it's, it's interesting. Like I've never heard of that before in my life. And I wonder if people who 
you know, he's like, if something were to happen to me and I was to suddenly not, uh, to, to have low or no vision, I wouldn't know about that app. And I wonder how I would come across it. And, um, certainly, uh, there are, you know, advocacy groups. So it'd be, it's good to think about like how we can spread the word on that. And that's part of the reason why I want to share it here, not just for the volunteers, but also for the folks who might need it, uh, to check out. All right. Well, as I continue to wear this sad elephant atop my head, we come to the end of this episode of iOS Today. If you have questions, feedback, or want uh, your shortcuts, questions answered, you send those to iostoday at twit.tv. You can also uh, tweet at us with the hashtag AskIOSToday or let us know in the, the Discord. Um, the you can you can tune in and watch the show live along with any uh, issues we run into uh, by going to twit.tv slash live where we record the show uh, every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, 1800 UTC. But the best way to get the show is by subscribing to it. So that way, as soon as it's ready, you have it on your device with maybe one of those apps we talked about earlier today. Just go to twit.tv slash iOS and you can subscribe to the show in audio or video formats um, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. We try to be in all the places that you are listening to the show. Uh, I should also mention Club Twit. If you'd like to check out all of our shows ad-free uh, and would like to also be a part of uh, the club who is helping to support us, then you should check out Club Twit. For seven bucks a month, you get every Twit show ad-free. Uh, you get access to an exclusive Twit Plus bonus feed that has content you won't find anywhere else. And you can join the special members-only Discord server where we are all hanging out, hosts, producers, other Twit folks, and all of the cool cats who are part of the Twit club uh, hang out and chat in the Discord. That's twit.tv slash club twit to check it out. Seven bucks a month, and you are supporting us directly, and we're so thankful uh, to those of you who have signed up and so thankful to those of you who will sign up uh, after hearing about this. Um, I also want to mention Tech Break, uh, twit.tv slash TB. Uh, you can head there and subscribe to this if you're not already subscribed to the Twit Bits feed. Uh, by doing so, you can check out some uh, kind of immediate content, I would call it. Uh, it's it's a way for those of us um, who you know produce video for uh, I or for for twits to be able to uh, quickly share new stuff that we might, you know, let's say I get uh, a new product in the mail and, you know, maybe I'll do a, a hot episode on it eventually, but right now I just want to quickly talk about it so I can get that to you quickly. Or if some news breaks, we can quickly share it. It's just a sort of pared down way for us to communicate uh, stuff with all of you. So uh, if you're into the news and kind of latest and greatest, or you just kind of want a preview of some stuff that might be coming, uh, twit.tv slash TB for tech break. All right, Rosemary Orchard, if folks would like to follow you online and check out all the great work you're doing, where do they go to do that? Well, the best place is over at rosemaryorchard.com where you can find links to all the things I do, including social media sites, including Twitter and micro.blog where you can follow me with the username Rosemary Orchard. And of course, you can chat with me in the Club Twit Discord as well in the iOS Today channel. Micah, how about you? I am at Micah Sargent on many a social media network, or you can head to chihuahua.coffee, C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee, uh, where I've got links to the places I'm most active online. Uh, that, it truly brings us to the end of this episode of iOS Today. So all that's left is to say goodbye and thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Goodbye, everyone. Hey, if you like tech news, but you also like hearing about it from the people who are actually writing the stories, well, I've got a show for you. It's called Tech News Weekly, and it's me, Jason Howell, along with my co-host, Micah Sargent. Every week, we invite the people making and breaking the biggest tech news stories from around the web onto this show uh, to talk to us about it. It's a lot of fun. You should check it out. Tech News Weekly can be found at twit.tv slash TNW every Thursday. We'll see you there.